Welcome. My name is Kathy Minnis, and I lead product strategy for modern workplace transformation at Microsoft. Our team name really reflects our mission to transform the way our customers work in three key areas, creating industry-specific workflows that scale, empowering the world's 2 billion first-line workers with the tools and technology they need to do their best work, and finally, by layering insights and analytics to our customers to help drive better business results. Thank you so much for being here today and for the opportunity to connect. I'm excited to take you through a dynamic overview of the first line worker opportunity, providing you with a deeper understanding of the role of the first line workforce, as well as an overview of the technology that can empower that workforce. And throughout the presentation, I'll share inspiring stories of transformation of our customers. First line workers are, and have always been, the backbone of the world economy. This has become even more apparent in the face of the pandemic. First line workers are the essential workers who have enabled hospitals to deliver critical care, staffed grocery stores, offered curbside pickup, and more. And as the world looks to respond, recover, and reimagine the way we work, the first line workers out in the field and on the front lines will be critical. And yet, despite their importance, this audience has historically been underserved by technology. And so now we have a time to take a step back and say, now what? The answer starts with reimagining how you empower your first line workforce. For some inspiration, let's start with a quick video that profiles how three innovative companies are doing just that. When COVID happened, we don't do a lot of virtual visits. It was really unique. Team member engagement is the holy grail. We did have to make the unfortunate decision to temporarily suspend our operations. Our aim really is to deliver outstanding epilepsy care. Attending clinics for some families is a challenge, both in terms of time and cost. The ability for a first-line worker to be at a task, hands-free, reach out to an expert, and they can work through the problem together. And that saves you know, a tremendous amount of time, eliminates travel, and resolves the problem more quickly. Microsoft 365 provides our company of over 42,000 employees a common platform that enables collaboration with a unified experience. Teams was transformative. It allowed us overnight to collaborate, challenge each other, and create protocols. It's allowed us to connect corporate right to the first line team member. You feel more connected to your company. It's given us collaboration abilities across the company that we never had before. It helped us set up our curbside service and get it up and running in 48 hours so that we can continue to serve our customers. It enables me to deliver care to that family and to that child at their convenience. As we progress beyond the current COVID-19 pandemic and start to get back to normal, we're gonna keep rolling with this. So there's no reason to go back. I feel what I can accomplish here has no limits. Now that we've talked a little bit about the importance of the first line workforce, I'd like to share with you some of the technology that we've created to help empower this workforce. And a little bit later, my colleague Scott Morrison will walk you through a demo of some of these features as they come to life. So we know that most first line workers spend their day on the go and on their mobile devices. Teams provides a central place for first line workers that is simple and secure and on one platform for your entire organization. The Teams mobile app is where and how first line workers do their jobs. A hub for notifications, communication, and collaboration. New communication tools like Push to Talk with Walkie Talkie. Productivity tools like Shifts to manage schedules and Tasks to manage work. And it's all on a platform that allows for the creation and management of apps and workflows that your business relies on. Now we understand that all of your employees from your CEO to your first line worker need a super easy way to communicate with chat, voice, 
video, and file sharing. We have capabilities like targeting that allows users to message people based on their role or skill. We get that it's super important to be able to message the right role at the right time, and that for shift-based workers, we don't necessarily know the name of the person we're trying to reach, but we know the role. So knowing who's on duty at any given moment can be challenging. So we have a new capability coming later this year for shift powered tags so that a first line worker can message manager and that message will only be delivered to whoever is working at that moment. We also have messaging capabilities like priority notifications and secure image annotation that allow FLWs to take, annotate, and share pictures on a secure and compliant platform. A new communication capability releasing to general availability in Teams is Walkie Talkie, a push to talk experience that enables clear, instant, and secure voice communication over the cloud, turning employee or company owned Android smartphones and tablets into a Walkie Talkie. This native built in app in Teams reduces the number of devices employees must carry and helps lower costs for IT and customers who currently use analog radio devices will no longer need to worry about crosstalk or eavesdropping from outsiders, nor the limited range of radio, as walkie-talkie works over Wi-Fi or cellular data. A little bit later in this session, I'm going to share some more about walkie-talkie and some of the other integrations available with partner devices that provide purpose-built functionality for the first-line role. One of the new capabilities of Teams to help with broader access to information is the integration of Yammer communities, so employees can stay connected, informed, and engaged. They can access critical messages, safety alerts, and live events in one place. And it creates a space for employees to ask questions and share knowledge across teams and departments. My first job was in the snack bar of a swim club. And then all my jobs in high school and college were in restaurants or retail stores. My schedule was always printed on a piece of paper and posted in the back room. I remember how challenging it was to have to trade shifts or take a day off and find coverage. So many trips to those break rooms. Today, with shifts in teams, first line managers can create, update, and distribute schedules digitally. In Scott's demo, we'll share a bit more about how all of this comes together for your first line workers and their managers, plus integrates with your favorite workforce management systems. This has been a super important capability, particularly during COVID, when schedules were so fluid and companies really needed to be purposeful about in-person transactions. Let's take a look at how Teams enabled one of our customers to take drastic actions to enable business continuity while keeping their first-line employees safe. Alcoa is all about safety and one of our core values is care for people. We have a plant here on the east coast of Iceland. We were quick to understand that the virus could pose serious danger to our people, so we quickly reacted to that. We need to operate 24-7, but we obviously had to do drastic things in order to be able to continue our work. Teams is the communication tool we use at our plant to get internal messages across to all of our workforce. The biggest thing we had to do was that we needed to totally segregate the shifts. My team, it cannot be taken for granted that people would do something like this in such a short notice. We changed from eight hour shifts to 12 hour shifts in three days. Having teams and shifts just made it possible, made it very, very easy. We created a special COVID-19 channel. We had to create new rules around transporting our cafeteria, around cleaning, making sure that people are cleaning all the surface that they touch between shifts. And we asked people to pin this channel to the top of their list to make sure that they wouldn't miss anything. We asked people to post videos or pictures and tell us what you're doing today, and uh, people loved it. 
So we really just felt that there was a need to get the workforce together and we decided let's try to do a town hall online and record it so it would be accessible to everybody. Teams was definitely not a small thing in responding with COVID. It was crucial. I don't know how we would have done it without it really. At our plant, we haven't had a case, which we are just so grateful for. But there is no doubt in our mind that this is because we took such drastic actions. We really felt the responsibility of what we needed to do in order to protect our people. That's one thing to like organizing and push it out, but then it's the people that are affected by it. I mean, those are the heroes, definitely. Tasks in Teams allows first-line workers to have one view of all their work. We also know there is a need for corporate offices to better communicate and work with their first-line workforce. To support that, we have in preview a new capability of task publishing that lets companies create tasks at the corporate level and push those to targeted teams across their first-line workforce. For example, leadership at a nationwide retailer can create tasks and publish them directly to, let's say, just the stores in California with cafes. And then they can track progress against those assigned tasks. We're also excited about approvals in Teams, making it easy to request, approve, or reject various asks in an experience as easy to use as chat. For example, a first-line worker in a manufacturing plant could request an approval to confirm that a repair is completed correctly, right from a chat conversation, and then have that approval be tracked as part of a broader workflow using Power Automate. All of these approvals, both formal and informal, across your systems will automatically show up in Teams. Approvals will be generally available in the coming months. One of my favorite things about Teams is that it's truly a platform to create the applications and workflows critical to your business. We have new capabilities around SharePoint lists and Teams that can serve as the foundation of your business processes. Bots and Power Apps that allow you to take certain flows like notifications around curbside pickup or checking inventory and surface that in a natural way in Teams. With integration with line of business apps, Teams gives first-line workers a single place to do all their work so they can be efficient and happy. Let's take a look at how Telstra's citizen developers automate processes with Power Apps in Microsoft Teams, saving millions of minutes. And then my colleague Scott Morrison is going to take us through a demo to show you how all of this comes to life in Teams. The biggest changes for our business has been the way that we communicate things out to our technicians. When we looked at the ecosystem for a field technician, there were lots of different applications and systems and links and places to go and get information, having to manage and service all of that. It can be quite challenging and what we really wanted to do is we wanted to really bring that together into one place for them. Microsoft Teams has been really important to running our field services. We saw this amazing opportunity to integrate Power Apps. We created two platforms, Technician Plus and Leader Plus, linked into Microsoft Teams and made that cohesive experience for our users. It really has everything. It's more about automating and digitising a lot of those manual processes which were typically done via paper. It's really been an integral part of ensuring that the rest of the technician workforce is up to speed. First thing in the morning, I log onto my tablet, jump onto Technician Plus to make sure I'm across all the new communications and news that is uploaded there daily. Then I travel to my first job. I think the foundations that we laid has really helped create that platform for crisis management, whether it be fires or floods, or obviously the most recent pandemic. We have to be quite agile in the way that we develop solutions to be able to manage those. And I spent about seven years in the field servicing our customers. I then transitioned to a role in the field digitization team. I don't have a typical software engineering or IT background and what the Power Platform has allowed me to do is really develop an application within 48 hours with end-to-end -end reporting. We've automated and digitised around 70 processes. We have visibility of weather warnings and we have meetings on MS Teams daily with our field leads just to ensure our safety before we are mobilising. 
technicians will go out to those sites and they'll capture photos through their tablet. And then our resource coordinators can visualise that information in a Power BI report. Being in the field, we knew where to go for the updates and communications. It's increased our efficiency dramatically. We can service our customers quicker. Power Platform has helped us get about 10 million minutes back into our business, which has increased the productivity of our people. I'm really passionate about building that community of problem solvers, seeing those guys out there using the tools that have developed, and it makes you want to provide a better experience. I like resolving customers' issues, and the tools that we've been given definitely improved our experience and the customer's experience. So you heard about how Teams is helping customers like Telstra. Now I'm going to show you what it actually looks like for their workers. Isaiah works as an operator in a manufacturing plant. And you can notice that the version of Teams that he has probably looks a little bit different than what you're used to. And the reason for that is his IT administrator is able to control his experience through policy packages. This is particularly helpful in onboarding a large amount of folks and dealing with the variability in who's working when. Additionally, Isaiah has all of the tools he needs at his fingertips, including his shift information. Shifts allows Isaiah to know exactly when he needs to be working. And what's great is that as the schedules update, for instance, his plant switched from eight hour shifts to 12 hour shifts, he has all of that information right at his fingertips and he no longer has to go into the break room and look at the printed out schedule. This is particularly useful as things continue to change and they're able to schedule him with a pod of other workers and be able to increase social distancing. He can see all of his shifts, but what's great about shifts is there's a workforce management built directly into shifts, but he also could be getting his information from whatever workforce management system his company uses, whether that be Kronos, Blue Yonder, or another tool. And anything that he makes as a change in shifts will reflect in that system of record. He can go into his shift and see all the details about where he needs to be throughout the day, including various activities. He also has access to who he's gonna be working with. So if he needs to reach out to them or just know what to expect, he's easily able to get to that information. Finally, the biggest thing that's beneficial about using shifts is it gives Isaiah a lot more control and flexibility in his schedule. As we all know, things can come up and by allowing him to swap or offer his shifts with a colleague, he's actually able to make sure that that shift gets filled as opposed to simply calling in and making it his manager's problem. So for instance, if he wanted to swap this shift, he can pick Joni here and need to pick up kids. He's able to go ahead and request that that shift gets swapped with Joni. Now that he is ready to start his day, he's able to clock in and just like shifts can be backed by the right workforce management tool, the time clock can actually also be backed by your time in attendance. And so he's able to clock in here. And what's great is that this time clock is geo-aware, meaning it knows he's actually in the plant and not clocking in from somewhere else. He can take breaks throughout the day and he can get back to his work. So the first thing that Isaiah checks when he's in, uh, when he's gotten to the plant is his tasks. And this is a great way that you can communicate with the prior shift. The tasks can come from those in the plant or they can come from other systems as well, whether those be IoT, where automated triggers create a task, or they can be sent from a central location out to all of the plants. Digging in to his tasks, he's easily able to see what's assigned to him and what he needs to handle for the day. And then for each of those, he can dig into that and get the detailed information. So here, he needs to check the line one machine for damage before his shift starts. And he has access to all that information, but can actually also add attachments of his own. So for instance, he can take a photo. And so he can take a picture of what that machine looks like and using the team's smart camera can actually annotate 
directly on it if there's something that he's noticed. So he can attach that and then mark the task complete. In addition to being able to see the tasks that are just assigned to him, he can also look at the work orders across the entire plant in case there's something that's not picked up by anyone that he wants to go ahead and help out with. Finally, we have off shift access, which means that when Isaiah's off shift, opening up the Teams app will actually let him know that he's not gonna be paid for this time. And this is incredibly important in terms of making sure that both labor laws are followed, but also that Isaiah has the right expectations and right experience if he has Teams installed on his personal device. He's able to easily accept that and go back to what he wanted to do. Because Isaiah remembered that he's got a vacation coming up and he wants to be able to request time off. Yet another way that he can get more control over his schedule is he can go ahead and put in a request for time off and give a reason if needed. He sends that to his manager and just like that shift swap, the workforce management tool is able to weigh in on whether it's a valid swap and then his manager is able to approve the final request. Switching over to his manager, Patty, she's able to see the shifts across the entire plant and make sure that they have the right folks doing the right jobs at the right time. She can see all of the information that she needs to make sure that everything is filled, as well as information if there's a conflict in the schedule. For instance, Alan here appears to be scheduled both as an operator and a technician, and she can easily go and update the schedule to fix those conflicts. Additionally, she has the ability to create open shifts where anyone who wants to pick up extra hours can ask for those open shifts. And assuming that it complies with what's in the workforce management system's rules, they can get those extra hours, further having more flexibility and meeting the business's needs to have every shift filled. She can easily copy the schedule for the next week, or the schedule can be created through the workforce management tool of choice. Additionally, Power Automate can now be used to further automate some of these tasks that Patty has to do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be managing certain approvals, or it could even be exporting some of this data for reporting purposes that she might need to better understand how things are going. You saw those requests that Isaiah put in, and Patty easily has access to approving or denying those. And so she'll go ahead and give Isaiah the day off, but this shift swap seems to have a conflict, and so she's going to deny it. Now that she's got her shifts in order, she's able to go over and understand what is going on in the plant. And this is through tasks. She can easily see all of the tasks across all of the areas in her plant, either in this compact list view or through other views, such as boards, where they can get a more in-depth view of each task, including pictures that were attached or are relevant to the particular task at hand. She can see charts, and this includes all of the information about what is in progress, how things are going by area, what the priorities are, as well as who it's been assigned to. And finally, she can see all of the tasks on a calendar schedule. And as easily as dragging and dropping an item to a day, she can schedule that particular task. But she can also go one step further. She can make sure that she understands things, breaking it down by filters. For instance, if she just wants to see what is not picked up yet, she can filter it to unassigned, and actually, that filter applies across all of the views. She can then quickly take all of these tasks and all in one action, assign those in bulk and give Isaiah these cleanliness tasks so that she knows that everything that needs to be done is taken care of. These are just a few of the ways that both workers and managers are able to deal with ever-changing conditions 
in terms of getting sure the right people are working and that they know exactly what they need to do to be effective when they're there. Thanks, Scott. Now, because the type of work that the first line workforce typically performs requires greater mobility and the physical environment in which they work is usually industry specific, there's a range of devices they need to get their jobs done. These can be as simple as a mobile device or a tablet, and in other cases, they need more purpose-built devices like walkie-talkie in a retail store or wearables for remote assist scenarios like field service technicians. Through a new integration between Teams and RealWare head-mounted devices, first-line workers will be able to access information and communicate hands-free with remote experts from their job sites. Workers at a Honeywell factory in Houston, Texas, for example, are using Teams embedded in a wearable computer from our partner RealWare to live stream what they see to remote colleagues and experts while having hands-free conversations. This has allowed them to continue production and complete critical factory acceptance testing in the midst of the pandemic, keeping engineers around the world connected and engaged to ensure everything is built properly. For walkie-talkie and teams, customers have a range of options to choose from for push-to-talk enabled devices, including wired and wireless solutions. Walkie-talkie is available now on Android devices and teams, including on the Samsung Galaxy X Cover Pro device, which provides a dedicated push-to-talk hotkey, giving teams one-touch access to each other, even when the phone is locked. Let's take a look at how Suffolk Construction is using walkie-talkie to connect their teams on job sites. Proven Possible Wrong is really challenging the norm and the status quo in the industry. We've worked on a lot of different iconic projects around the country. On a job site, the best thing that can happen is being able to quickly deliver the right information to the right people to get their job done. We were communicating over multiple devices, both radios and cell phones, and sometimes, you know, upwards four or five. The different products that are out there have very limited radio band capabilities. And when you're in a downtown or an urban environment, there's always crosstalk from different vendors, police, fire department, so that you really have to be conscious of your information that's going out there. Walkie-talkie for teams here at Suffolk will kind of be the next big thing. 10-4, you need to hold that date. Everything is dedicated on a channel that we know the only people in that channel are gonna be the people that we wanna be communicating with. You're no longer limited by the range of your radios. You can instantly communicate with your team. If we're able to muster 150 to 200 people across multiple disciplines and multiple trade partners with a click of a button and just some finite information. It looks like we're gonna to need to order about 10 laptops. We're talking about a major game changer. Sometimes on a project, in order to solve a problem, no one person can answer that question. Are you able to verify level eight? Can you just forward them to me? Being able to toggle between the design consultants and the superintendents at the speed of now, he can connect with all aspects of our construction team. If we're able to save even a couple minutes on solving one problem, well, we can get right on to that next challenge that we have ahead of us. The biggest outcome really ends up being the time savings, and the time savings then translate into cost savings, which is better for our clients. The best part is merging all these different mediums into one device. This is what I've been waiting for for the last 10 years, to pack up my things at the end of the day and only pick up one phone and walk out the door. When the pandemic hit, businesses quickly saw the need to transform manual and in-person processes. Travel restrictions, capacity limitations, and more safety protocols around manual processes across all industries posed new challenges. Whether it was expert assistance in a manufacturing plant, virtual store walks in a retail setting, or patients being able to visit their doctor, the processes that were once done on paper and in person now couldn't happen. And so the need to transform those processes accelerated greatly. Transformation that normally would have taken place over two years seemed to happen in weeks. 
Let's take a look at how bookings plus teams is one way that we've transformed an in-person process to help patients and doctors connect with virtual visits. The Bookings app in Microsoft Teams is a powerful new tool that enables virtual visits for healthcare and streamlines scheduling tasks. With Bookings in Teams, the scheduler can see multiple clinicians' Outlook calendars, so it's easy to create appointments and manage complex scheduling demands. Use the drop-down menu to select the appointment type. Patient information, appointment details, internal notes, and links to documents can be included as needed in the clinician's invitation. Customized appointment confirmations and reminders are automatically sent to the patient while maintaining the privacy of the sender's email address. With bookings, clinics can also offer patients the options to see available appointment times and schedule their own virtual visit. Patients can easily join their virtual appointment via a web browser or mobile app with a single click or touch. With bookings in Teams, providers can enable a virtual lobby for patients to wait before being admitted to the visit. And clinicians can make use of all the great meeting features in Microsoft Teams, including high quality video and audio, custom backgrounds, and cloud recording. The Bookings app empowers clinicians to offer secure virtual appointments with Microsoft Teams. Now, once transformed, companies are able to do and see things at a scale that was never possible before logistically. I'd like to share with you the story of St. Luke's and how they changed their in-person patient consultations when faced with the need to quickly transform a service to serve their patients. For our patients in the COVID-19 pandemic, we didn't have the luxury of time. We knew we needed to act faster. The speed with which the pandemic hit relied on a platform that could work just as fast. And for us, we found that teams really did help us keep up. I first became symptomatic with COVID-19 on Saturday, March 28th. I was able to connect with my doctor on Microsoft Teams, so he's like, it's time. My breathing was getting worse, and that's when they transferred me to the ICU about 36 hours after I was admitted to the hospital. Here I am alone, and my parents are 800 miles away, my son is home alone, and it really became real that I may not survive this, and it was scary. I was asking the doctors, I'm like, can I not go on the vent? Intubation is tough. This is a hard thing for patients to survive. We said, what can we do to keep patients off the ventilator? At that point, we had been able to use Teams, gather some of the data. One of the big things that was popping up is a thing called self-proning. Basically, when we had patients to lay on their belly. After several weeks of doing our protocol, we were 6% under the national average. In terms of mortality, I literally had to think about every single breath that I took. I still had this fear in my head. Was it enough? Curtis was awesome. He had been in the ICU and then he came to our floor. When a virtual consultation was being set up, the doctor could just connect to Microsoft Teams in the room. The actual use of Microsoft Teams is tremendously beneficial in my overall care. I was walking him out of the hospital and Mike, the hospital supervisor, grabbed us at the elevator and said, congratulations, you're the 100th COVID patient to be discharged. It was just a great, great moment for us. Since being discharged from the hospital after recovering from COVID, I've actually connected with my care team from St. Luke's Anderson. Hi, Stacy. how you doing? I'm doing well, it's so good to see you. It's great to see him happy and healthy and having this virus behind him. I can definitely attest to the fact that you were a trooper. I feel good. I'm happy to be alive. This is about that one person in front of us. To see the improvement, to see them back living their life, makes you want to do more people are able to connect with their medical team in a virtual environment. That's one of the steps that we've made, which is great. Such a powerful and moving story. And it's so inspiring for me to see how technology can not only improve business outcomes, but can really save lives. Thank you so much for taking the time to connect today and learn a little bit more about our offerings for your first line workforce. In closing, I'd like to leave you with a brief video that highlights some of the heroes of the first line workforce. 
whether it's manufacturing PP and E masks or ventilators or medicine. We've all found a way to help change the world in a positive way. The foundations that we laid has really helped create that platform for crisis management, whether it be fires or floods, or obviously the most recent pandemic. Seeing those guys out there using the tools that have developed, and it makes you want to provide a better experience. Using Teams allows us to find the support we need from the coworkers we need it from, regardless of where they are. One of our core values is care for people. We really felt the responsibility of what we needed to do in order to protect our people. I mean, those are the heroes, definitely.